So what happens when the largest TV out there just isn't large enough for your gaming needs? Well, that means it's time to get yourself a gaming projector. BenQ reached out to me a few weeks ago and asked me if I wanted to try out the TK700 gaming projector. Naturally, I saw an opportunity and I decided to try out gaming on a big screen. I've got a few things to say about gaming on a projector like the TK700, which has been specifically optimized for that purpose. If you're looking for an affordable gaming projector for your PS5, Series X, or even your PC, then you'd be happy to know that this is a great option if you can get by with some of its limitations. Let's talk about everything you can get for $17.99 Canadian dollars or $14.99 US dollars. That's the price of the TK700. First, let's talk about the hardware. On the front side of the TK700, there's the lens which projects the light onto the screen. It also says on there that this is a 4K HDR capable projector. On the right side, we've got a fan and a single 5 watt chamber speaker. At the intersection between the left and the front side, there's another fan. The cooling system on a projector is very important, so I was really happy about these. Behind the projector, there's a 3.5mm audio out mini jack, a power adapter port, an RS-232 control port, a USB 2.0 Type A with 1.5 amp power delivery, two HDMI 2.0 ports with HDCP 2.2, one of them also supports eARC and Dolby Atmos audio output through HDMI. There's also a third HDMI 2.0 port and enclosed portion of the projector. On top of the projector, there are two knobs for manually adjusting focus and zoom. There's also the power input select, echo blank, menu, mode and back buttons as well as an OK and direction select buttons on the top side. Underneath the TK700, there's three rubber feet. If you plan on mounting, there's three screw holes under there as well. It also comes with a small remote control for accessing different menu options. The TK700 is a projector with a 1.3 times zoom throw capability. This means it can project 80 inches screen size at 7.5 feet distance from projector to the wall or the screen, 90 inches at 8.5 feet, 100 inches at 9.4 feet, and 120 inches at 11.3 feet. I decided to get it mounted to the ceiling in a basement with about 11 feet of space between the projector and the projection screen, which in my case was the wall. With that distance, I was expecting a 120 inches projection screen size. Keep in mind that the larger the image projection, the higher the impact on the overall light output from the projector. Mounting can be done using three 8mm M4 screws and a separate ceiling or wall mount accessory, which you'd have to buy separately. We had a projector up there initially, so we just replaced it with this one. If it's your first time mounting a projector, you'll have to drill into your ceiling to get it up there. You can also just place it on a shelf, table, or something similar. The TK700 doesn't have a vertical lens shift, which can be an issue during installation, but not necessarily. Lens shift allows the lens to move vertically and or horizontally within the projector to provide a perfect straight edged image with a uniform focus. This allows for more flexible placement options for the projector at no cost to the resolution. Some of you might find that you have to get the projector position super low depending on the height of your projection screen to avoid using an undesirable keystone correction. Once you've got it situated, connect the power adapter to power it up. For my setup, the HDMI cable is behind the wall and that's why you can't see that it's connected to the PS5 or Series X. Also, I'm only using the single HDMI 2.0 port with audio return. To get the best viewing experience with projectors, you usually want to operate in a dark room. The TK700 does have a 3200 lumen brightness level, which is great for viewing in decently lit rooms. The first thing you'll notice once it comes on is the size of the screen, how blurry the image quality is, and how off balance everything seems to appear. In order to fix the screen size, you can use the manual zoom knob on the projector. To fix the blurriness, you can use the manual focus knob, and to fix the vertical and horizontal imbalance, you use the manual 2D keystone correction buttons. You can do that with the remote control as well. The TK700 uses DLP technology with embedded DMD to mimic beautiful 4K HDR content, which is perfect for gaming on current gen consoles like the PS5 and the Series X. You can game at 4K and 60Hz with HDR turned on for the absolute best gaming experience. Unless you're gaming competitively, then you probably won't care for gaming at higher frame rates. And if you do, you can lower the resolution to 1080p for 120 frames per second. Consoles can't push 240 frames per second. You'll have to get a PC for that. This is a gaming projector, so it's been optimized for that purpose. One feature that boosts gameplay experience is the very low input lag of 16.67 millisecond at 60 Hz for both 4K and 1080p resolutions. 
Input lag is a time between when an action is entered using something like a controller and when that action is displayed on the screen. This number is important if you are a competitive gamer who plays a lot of first person shooters. If you want an even lower input lag, you can get down to 8.3 milliseconds at 1080p and 120 hertz, or even 4 milliseconds at 1080p and 240 hertz. But that last one is only possible with PC as consoles can only push close to 120 hertz. In order to get the best input lag at any resolution, you need to enable fast mode as well, which can only be used while playing using the TK700 FPS game mode. FPS game mode is a high performance gaming mode that unlocks access to details adjustment and fast mode options. Details adjustment basically increases the overall brightness of the image with a small sacrifice to its black levels. This will be very useful in games with a lot of dark scenes and hidden spots. Fast mode reduces response time and latency but you'll have to turn off keystone correction. When using fast mode, make sure to set keystone and overscan to zero to minimize response time. The TK700 has a specification of 96% Rec. 709 color gamut. In SDR, there are six picture modes to choose from and in HDR, you have access to two. For SDR, there's bright, living room, game, sports, cinema, and user. For HDR, there's HDR game and HDR 10. Each color mode works best in different settings. In bright rooms, you'd want to use the bright or user preset, but in dark spaces, you might want to opt for the cinema preset, and this is for SDR modes. HDR modes pretty much look and work the same, so there's really no specific reason to choose either. There is no support for wide color gamut for HDR on the TK700. 3D is another feature of the TK700 to note, and it's very bright when enabled. The problem with it though is that the projector does not have controls for increasing or decreasing the 3D effect. I tried out a few games in the PS5 and Series X at 4K 60Hz to test out the 16.67 millisecond input lag and image quality of the projector including its HDR capabilities and brightness level. I also had fast mode turned on and details adjustments set to low for my tests. Horizon Forbidden West was the first game I tested. It's a very visually appealing PlayStation game and so it was worth a test, especially with HDR and performance mode enabled. I've played a lot of it on my OLED TV so I expected to be disappointed in the quality in comparison. But I can say confidently now that I was not disappointed. The black levels of the TK700 is nothing like an OLED, but it definitely stands out compared to other conventional projectors. It does have below average black levels with a 10,000 to 1 contrast ratio. I went ahead and played GTA 5 Enhanced Edition on PS5 as well to see how nice the colors produced by the projector would be, and I have to admit I thought it was excellent. Even more so because I was viewing it on a 120 inch screen. Next up we played Mortal Kombat 10 on the PS5 which is a fast paced fighter game that requires low latency. Since I'm used to gaming on an OLED TV with a very low input lag, I did notice a very slight difference but I was able to quickly adjust and it became unnoticeable. My brother who hadn't played in a while couldn't even notice any difference at all. I also tried out Forza Horizon 5 on the Xbox Series X to test out the latency. Again I noticed slight differences between the TK700 and my OLED TV especially when I was breaking or turning around corners. I got used to that pretty quickly as well. Most people won't notice or even care about the input lag at 4K 60Hz, but some of you might, especially if you're coming from a gaming centric monitor or an OLED TV. With the FPS game mode enabled throughout my tests, of course I had to play a first person shooter like Halo Infinite. The game looked pretty great and scenes that are usually dark in game appeared brighter. Like the other games, I was able to adapt to the latency quickly as well. The TK700 is spec'd at 3200 lumens, which I noticed immediately while gaming in the basement, which is dark most of the time. I tested the brightness further by letting light into the basement through the window while gaming and it still looked great and games were very much playable. This means that the TK700 projector doesn't have to be used in dark rooms or basement spaces only. The TK700 also has BenQ's Lumi Expert feature that senses the ambient light in a room and adjusts the brightness of the projector accordingly. This is great especially in somewhere like a living room where light changes a lot throughout the day. It also has a 5 watt chamber speaker that utilizes BenQ's Travolo technology. This helps in optimizing the audio signal in an attempt to add more immersion to sound. There are five sound presets to choose from. They include cinema, music, game, sports, and user. I found that the inbuilt speaker is decent enough for casual use, but I'd rather use an external audio system like a soundbar, headset, or something else for gaming and movies. Roger that. The TK700 also comes with a 3 year warranty from BenQ which is awesome. As for the lifespan of the projector's lamp, there are multiple echo mode options to choose from. These modes allow the lifespan of the lamp to range from 4000 hours in normal mode, 8000 hours in smart echo, 10,000 hours in echo, 
and up to 15,000 hours in lamp save mode. Replacement of the lamp will take some time with those modes being used. And when the time comes to replace the lamp, it's relatively inexpensive at 159 US dollars at the time of this video, at least. If you're looking for an affordable projector primarily for gaming, then this is definitely it. It doesn't come equipped with Android TV, but you can easily play media directly from one of your consoles or insert a Fire TV stick to turn it into a smart projector instantaneously. The TK700 is nice for watching movies too, but if that's the main reason you want a projector, then this might not be the right one. Color and saturation aren't the very best you can get for watching movies on a projector, but most folks probably wouldn't even notice. While gaming though, colors in SDR and HDR modes look great. What the TK700 was designed for, it excels at greatly, especially with gaming-centric features like low input lag, FPS game mode, and high brightness. One really annoying issue I discovered right off the bat was how slow the TK700 was switching between HDMI inputs or any change at all of signal resolution or frame rate. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds, which to me is quite long. Essentially, if you want a projector for gaming and watching media, then this could be it for you. If you want to watch movies only, probably not. If you want a game on a big screen on a budget, then I think you found the right projector. That's pretty much all there is to say about the TK700. If you're interested in checking prices on it, use the links I've provided in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below and comment hashtag big screen gaming. If you're new here, you should consider subscribing as well if you made it to this point. Thank you for watching. It's Tommy with Midas Tech, and I'm out. To me, I'm trying to get it. Working to become the best in me. I'm doing my job. That includes whipping and keeping the rest.